welcome to the channel if you're new here please like subscribe it, it gets me wanting to make more i do this for my mental health your mental health you know because we all love talking about dc don't we we just uh especially everything that's happening and as i said before in my my videos um this movement of Zack Snyder's really has sort of changed my life in a way because it, it, it's, it's been my life for the last, well, since Man of Steel. I've been helping promoting that uh, ever since the movie w was released. I'm trying to turn the negative into a positive. And, uh, and there's so many other people out there that started your groups and pages and big YouTube stars like Film Junkie and... Chris Pong and Chris Winston or whatever uh, his name is, uh, Philem Gubb, fellow Glaswegian, and so why do I bother making videos that nobody watches? Well, it's because it's fandom and it's because it's it's a connection. You know, it it, it connects people, uh, even if it's just one or two people. It's something there to talk about. So this video is going to probably get a lot of dislikes it's going to be controversial but please remember it is just my ideas my thoughts and has and uh and if you think differently that's your th that's your thoughts and opinions this is it i try when i do this channel to be honest and not biased or not you know because there are some channels out there that either do things for money and uh, do things to uh, and they follow that stream of thought uh, the the likes and the love for something can be persuaded by uh, the majority of what where myself you know i'd rather just say and do things my own way so Actually, I've been looking at this. Now, this is this has been put on my head um, because it used to be over my mouth um, because I'm trying to promote that that should be the title of the Justice League movie. Zack Snyder for everything that it's... Uh, for everything that we, we sort of stood for for the last few years. So, anyway. But I quite like it there. It, it, it's like... It could be my trademark, you know? I mean, it's, I mean, it is. It's not a bandit, you know. It's not a hairpiece or anything like that, you know. It's just a, just a mouthpiece, right? So, yeah, this is this is going to get tough, right? So, I, I, is anybody's new to this video? I don't rehearse anything, okay. And if I'm lucky, my phone works, okay. Or uh, so nothing's down. I have a great ideas beforehand, and when it comes to sitting here and looking at this wee green dot. It's it's uh, it's totally different. So why why do I hate Marvel? Right, I mean hate is pretty strong word to do it, but it's everything that it's become. And I'm going to I'm going to go back in time now and and go back to when I was just a little lad, uh, going into a newsagent shop and buying. Uh, like X Men comics and Spider Man comics and Thor comics. Or whatever. To be honest, being a young boy going into a, uh, a news agent shop uh, where there's not really much choice in what to buy, you would just see something, and maybe the news agent shop was lucky enough to buy it from a a market someplace to put it in their store. So it was not, uh, you know, unless you've subscribed to it, there's. Uh, for me, my personal view on it, there were not a lot of UK people that were buying comics because it wasn't the thing over here, you know, that like it is in America and, and maybe other places and stuff. It was just... Uh, childhood was totally different. Um, so the only thing you really got introduced to, like, superheroes was, like, the TV show. And just like many others, we grew up, you know, watching the Batman series or watching some black and white show with superheroes in it. But that is as far as we got. And of course, Christopher Reeve, Superman. Um, so I, I, I started, you know, 
buy the odd comic here and there, and it was very the numbers of it, of course, were like you, you can never get the next chapter because the comic store might not they're not the comic the news agents might not supply it. So it's not until you get older and you get your money yourself and you go out and you choose what to invest in. And growing up, people used to buy me like the Batman annuals and stuff, and, uh, and I, I've kept. My, uh, one of my first Batman annuals, which was uh, had Batman, and in the story, uh, I had him fighting a bear. You know, he's going toe to door with a bear, and that blew my world, you know. Um, and so, anyway, so as I was getting older, um, I, I noticed this kind of monthly magazine so it was in the news shop and it was Spider-Man and in these kind of monthly magazine comics um, it had more than just the one story it had and I've, st I've still got it today it's all in a box right it's uh, upstairs and and uh, so it started from the very beginning the earlier chapters then the next story in the magazine would be something present then the next chapter would be something in the future so you'd have like spider-man 2099 or something like that or it was so it's three different stories and so every week every month you would go in and you're back and you get the next chapter to those so i grew up reading spider-man and stuff and i don't remember the spider-man tv shows and psh, like that it's, it's cool so um i i got a a really good sense of who spider-man and peter parker was in those comics and and I'm oh, I collected thousands. And of course, uh, Tim Burton's Batman came out, and uh, that infused me to go down that road as well. And I got to get Batman comics, and Superman comics, and all that sort of stuff. So I was buying. I started buying all these comics, and of course, in the mind that I bought maybe an X Men or something like that, where it was the original group. You know, with the yellow suits, and you had, I believe it was something like Iceman that was in it or something, and uh, Arcane Joe and stuff. So, and I wasn't actually 100% sure what I was reading, just know that these people were in the comics and they had some mutant powers or something. So, it was just. Uh, so, it started to clear it to them and, and whatnot, and, it, and as I was reading the Spider Man, comics uh, and the Marvel comics I started to notice a difference in the writings of it it just seemed to they seemed to kind of blow their own trumpet you know it, it felt like the writing on them were just saying was telling you how fantastic the, the story it is that you're reading is and that you have to come back and what and I'm I'm going Wait a minute, you're trying to tell me how great this story is and how great this character is. Well, DC it wasn't. DC was taking me to I mean to hell and back. I was I was experiencing so many dark realities in life and um and of course my my first real graphic novel I bought when I was young was The Dark Knight Returns and that blew my mind uh, and I still got it today and I bought that in a, in a joke shop uh, in a holiday resort called Margate and I just read it and I went wow this is mature and it made me feel good it made me feel older and maturer and it made me see heroes in a totally different light uh, and a different way and as a was reading more DC. I was, I was realizing how sort of childish the Marvel comics were in in the reading. I mean, I, I gave it all a shot. I even collected the Hulk, which I was uh, there was a good Hulk series going on where it, um, I still got it upstairs. Uh, the Return of the Monster or something. I collected that, and uh, but again, everything just got just. I don't know, maybe it was the baddies, the villains or something, the stories just weren't striking a chord, so I drifted more to the DC and 
with the Batman Michael Keaton coming out and, and the animated series. It just everything about DC felt mature. And so so now we've got the comic side of things to to the side. And you know, as I say, closing everything else, you couldn't really the 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 t shirts you could get was like a Superman t shirt or a Batman t shirt, but again you weren't wasn't known to have like the Green Lantern t shirts and Wonder Woman. So there was a lot of DC characters still out there for me to explore and become a fan of. But it was the world's finest back there that just I loved the dynamics, I loved the duo and I I, I didn't get that when I was reading the Marvel comics. Um so anyway, um so Spider Man came out and uh the movie and I thought, wow, this is this is gonna be something epic uh, brilliant. But it for me, although it was decent enough, it, it wasn't the Spider Man I was reading in the comics. He, where were all the one-liners? You know, I, I used to remember reading Spider-Man 28, was it 2099 or something like that, and one of the lines always cracked me up was, what would your father say if he was alive today? Knock, knock, let me out of this coffin. It was just the human, the banter, the and I've seen none of that in those, in those three, three movies. And So I was kind of put off in a way, I think then the second Spider Man came out and I uh, was, oh, you know, and it was Andy Garfield to play the second Spider Man. I always forget his name. But he, he to me was, it was the closest thing to a Spider Man comic book that I had seen. But I think it followed too close to the last Spider Man movies and it didn't make a deal. And then Marvel was slowly in the picture and. They made a sequel, but they kind of felt rushed and they were trying to think me too much. And then all of a sudden, Iron Man were making movies and Hulk, there were umpteen Hulk movies. I actually enjoyed the first Hulk film. I thought it was okay. But this was long before like the universe was created. And I believe that Marvel was suffering in the, uh, the comic sales and stuff like that. So they were ready to get bought over and stuff um, and DC had always be belonged to Warner Brothers so for, for them I, I felt safe, safe and secure for the writers and everything else so the so then as I say as I was watching the Marvel movies I kept on thinking well you know and then Spider uh, Superman came out Superman Returns I was like what is this is like they took the director from the Marvel film from Sony from the X Men, and he had his idea. And so they, he turned that X Men into a good movie from the Marvel. We'll bring him on and do a DC, and he never gave us anything new. You know, he even got a guy uh, and and some scenes you would think was Christopher Reeve, and the the acting it was there was nothing in that film. There was no soul to Superman. He just looked miserable throughout and the the last 40 minutes wasn't even a fight sequence it was uh him lifting a planet a rock up in the space i i was just bad meanwhile there's iron man coming out and and i'm i'm thinking where's my heroes iron man was okay it was just you know i, I didn't really like him as a character much in the comics and a friend of mine at the time not much anymore he gave me these thousands and thousands of comic books uh, about Thor and I started to read them and not only did I notice how different it was but it was what I remembered Marvel Comics to be kind of daft and childlike uh, in the writings. The guy looked like an idiot in Thor and... Um, and I, when I watched like the old... 60s series of Marvel and they would see like the Hulk and Thor and it was cheesy and stuff uh, so there was nothing it was just you know oh you've got to watch the X-Men the X-Men is is what turns me on to these to these movies and I mean I, I watched the X-Men I thought it was alright it, it didn't encourage me to buy an X-Men comic book because those weren't the X-Men I, I grew up watching 
So, um, so yeah, I was I was longing for our heroes, and then Marvel uh, was, as I say, was taken over by Disney, and everything seemed to be okay. You know, everything seemed to Disney had some bought another franchise that I loved, which was Star Wars, and uh, and we all thought at the time that this was great news for both companies, Marvel and. Uh, and Star Wars, we thought, right, it's it a great company, and then I felt like, oh, Warner Brothers seems to be the underdog. You know, they're the underdog, that's like a small one. Um, so, but then this, the Star Wars movies came out, after the first one, I knew they just killed it, they've just killed uh, the first one. And, um, and as the Marvel's movies came out, I, f- I felt th- like... They were very light, uh, a lot of jokes, but not much depth to them. And to uh, when he was talking about the inner struggles, he was like t- keeping it light hearted all the way through, with maybe a wee dip of emotion, then back up and everything else. Um, nothing on the actors that were playing them or anything like that. It was just. It was it was just Saturday matinee movie for me, and so while they were all getting the praises and the money for the for the families that came, families would come and take their kids to see something that was safe, safe for them to watch. Man of Steel comes out, and wow. You know, and I believe even today, some people are seeing it for the first time and getting blown away, uh, or rewatching it and suddenly realizing. Because I had one guy in the in the work the other day there, who had just seen the Joker movie for the second time, and he much more appreciated it the second time. Because that's the problem when you go and see a film for the first time, you've got all these, and uh, thoughts and ideas about what you should see in the movie but it turns out not to be the case and then you judge it because it's not what you wanted so he loved the second time but here we go with Man of Steel so I then spend most of my time defending the movie and then I come across all the biased stuff you know all the biased treatment from Marvel fans and and, and as I start my campaign I, I realise that the there was a constant trend where they would, where critics as well would start putting down uh, DC for the same reasons that they would that they would raise Marvel up. So the the stuff that we were praising Marvel for, they would put down DC for doing for doing the same thing. So there was a lot of biased actions going on. There was a it was as though. Marvel Company had bought so many critics and so many web pages because let's face it, Disney is a huge, huge machine. Okay, they right now there's even talks about them um not doing 4K DVDs on the past movies and people say that they uh, movie companies follow Marvel for their examples. Uh so in a way, it kind of threatens, now with the Disney Plus thing, uh, it threatens the future of phys- physical DVDs, physical entertainment, which I and like so many other people out there love collecting uh, the movies. And uh, so it just seemed, and then you go to Rotten Tomatoes, and you look at Rotten Tomatoes, and it's like, wow, they've, it's, there was some evidence there that the 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 people that run Rotten Tomatoes is ex employees of Marvel Studios, right? And so they're going run it. So they're like promoting Marvel films while making sure. And and that's the state. Every company does this. Okay, they may come when it comes to an interview. They may say. You know, oh, we wish all the hero super films are success because that just makes, uh, you know, that we are, we're all doing good. That that's what everybody wants. Nonsense. They want their bad, so the other company uh, flourishes and makes more of the money. 
So now we get to the to the stage where Rotten Tomatoes is putting down, and and then there's been some films where they even removed the comments from, right? Especially the, the difference between Gal Gadot and the woman in um, what's her name, Captain Marvel. Uh, they they've like took away their comments for that for that movie because the two women were totally different in the way they approached uh, talking about what they hope to fulfil when young girls dreams and everything else. You had one that was quite a feminist and one saying, No, it's for everybody. Um so that was kinda off putting for me for for Marvel as well, of the biased sort of treatment that D C was getting. And um and as I say then Disney gets a hold of Spider Man and I watched Spider Man and it kinda just gelled with all the rest of the Marvel movies and it looked like Tony Stark Iron Man was just put in there to make Peter Parker one of his hoes. And and um and then they changed the characters of Flash Thompson and everything else and I, and I just thought after watching it I I turned to my boy and I thought they've just they've killed Spider Man now. They they've killed Spider Man. And I couldn't watch another Spider Man movie again. So it's like Disney for me has corrupted not only the Star Wars movie franchise, uh they've corrupted the potential of what Marvel could have been become. Now I know it's making money, it's making because it's a safe bet. It's it's like watching you know, you got you put trolls in, you know, the the cartoon movie and people will go and see it. it doesn't matter how bad or good it is, people go and see it as a as a thing that we, we will see. And they they marketed the movie as though you need to see every single film and then we get to the end game. Now during this process, during all the bias treatment and everything else according to that, Zack Snyder at the same time was having a hell of a time with with Warner Brothers. And DC was trying, uh, people at the, the top were trying to copy or imitate Marvel, which then resulted in really bad movies. And, uh, and it's only took for the movement of release the Snyder Cut for them to notice that they do not need to do that. And now, only now, are we suddenly realising that we can different variations. But it's way in the future. It's way in the future. So after defending DC and everything else, uh, and uh, trying to more it being actually different, that we can actually have two different types of hero movies. We can have the, the Disney version and the DC. Now DC, what at the time, what Warner Brothers, we believe to be director-driven. At Marvel, we have one guy, Kevin Feige. And uh, and I don't know if I said this in the, in the last video about Jeff Jones, but I'll say it again in case I haven't seen it. I believe, as I say, Kevin Feige should be investigated. Because he, he runs the whole show. And there's not many directors that come on board to make his movies for me, that have any talent. Um, the films will make money no matter who makes or who directs in it. It'll just make money. And what you're probably saying to yourself, oh, that's because the films are good. No, it doesn't. The films don't need to be good. The society uh, will go and see something because it's like their favourite packet of crisps. Or, or anything like that. They, they'll go and see it because it's some place they can leave the kids to for about an hour or two. Uh, does it make the film any good? Well, I've always said this in most of my videos. Does anybody really talk about Endgame? Does anybody talk about... Now, this was a film that... that or was it Infinity War? That's many, that's many of... Blew the top off of, of, um, of making money. And yet, nobody talks about it years after. What did he talk about? Hmm? Hmm. And whew, that's what they talk about. 
Why? Because you get the director's um, creativity in those movies. Marvel, every one of them is the same. I've watched a few of them. I have watched a few of them. I've seen the Hulk movies. Um, I've seen the Iron Man movies. I've seen the Thor movies. Uh, apart from Ragnarok. I've seen the two um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Ugh. And Avengers movie and Age of Ultron. And Doctor Strange and the Ant- Ant-Man. And uh, that's it. I mean, they were just pointless and doesn't spe- doesn't have the seriousness or gravity that I like. But again, for me, spending all this time defending DC and promoting Zack Snyder's cut, people, I mean, I talk to people and say, so you've got to see the Snyder cut, you've got to see the Snyder cut. Oh, but I see the Marvel films and everything else. And I went, you, it's just, uh, uh, that's what kind of turns my flow. I cannot enjoy Marvel movies because I know too much now of what's been going on behind the scenes. The lack of creativity. The biased treatment. The fact that it's a manufactured movie that has got no substance or depth or level to those films from the comics that had that to me is really aimed for the younger audience younger readers and 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 promotes the self however now i've got every respect for stan lee he was a creative genius he created these great characters but again, in the comic industry, you have these people that will, will say, Iron Man can't do this. Dummy can't do this. And this is what's so important for things like Elseworld, where BVS or Zack Snyder's Justice League is said to exist. We can have different versions of these people in the movies. And hopefully that's where Warner Brothers will be taking us and gradually letting other people know out there. I mean, I can no longer (laughs) wear Star Wars t-shirts because the minute I wear a Star Wars t-shirt, people will think I'm okay with the recent three movies that came out. No, I'm not. You know, I would have to say originals and prequels only. I I can't wear a Spider-Man top uh, because they'll think I endorse what they've done to Spider-Man. No. Marvel is owned by a huge company now. That is, that is overtaking the movie industry. That uh, that is buying up companies, uh, left, right, and centre, which is killing, which is killing independent film studios. Uh, I mean, they overtook Sony and stuff, and they took their characters and whatnot. They've got all they're looking for, uh, in, in Disney is to make a franchise, find the ingredients and then just copy it over and over and over again. And uh, that's why Warner Brothers' turn of events of now realising, thanks to the movement of the fans, that we will have these director-driven movies. These films that will be talked about that will push the boundaries and not have somebody come on to stage and say you will like this film this will be PG and again now we see what the movement is doing we see the what I said in the last video Ray Fisher coming up and pointing the fingers to people like him and say we'll have none of this you know we'll have we'll you know we'll have uh, directors like Zach and other people treat people behind the scenes with respect and the freedom to be creative and not under one dictatorship which is Kevin Feige 
and Disney Studios. Um, so I think I've covered most of why I hate Marvel. And it should be reasons for you to hate it as well. I'm not telling you to hate the movies. I'm just I'm just here explaining why I hate it and why and the reasons why these guys should hate it for those reasons as well. I'll probably make another one of these because I've probably missed out so much more reasons why I hate it. You know, and I would love the fact that you know I mean Disney is all over the place and products and merchandise can be found in anything in bags and and uh, school bags and everything else. Again, brainwashing the children like McDonald's used to do with their Happy Meals. You know, where, you know, buy this. If you buy this, they'll tell the parents that this is what you like so you'll take them to go and see the movie. DC's not like that. You know, it's very hard to get DC merchandise. So maybe I am feeling a wee bit envious. Of course I am. Because that's my fan, that's that's what I'm passionate about and I want to show it. And um, again, that's why I'm wearing this and why having that Snyder top when it arrives will be the best thing ever. So let me know about your thoughts and ideas and stuff and maybe you thought maybe you've got other reasons why you hate Marvel. And we'll bet you they're mine too. So Leave your comments below and thanks for watching.